everyone and welcome back to the Electron Retrax YouTube channel. I'm Martin Pickering and today we're going to be showing you how the RB45 works and how to get everything out of your controller. So let's get straight into it. The Electron Retrax RB45. It may be small, light and the simplest in their lineup. However, that doesn't make it any less powerful. It's able to control the ER 30s, 40s or 50s without any kind of issue, as well as fully proportional brakes. So let's see exactly how it works and how to set it up in your next model. Here we have the Electron Retrax RB45 controller. Our Retrax, our brakes and our steering servo. For this example, we're only going to use one Retrax and one brake to keep the wiring as simple as possible and as visual as possible for the example. However, the process is exactly the same for one, two or three retracts and one or two brakes. So let's get started. Now before we start, and before we start connecting things to the controller, just make sure that you have a full understanding of what goes where and please make double sure of the polarity of any batteries or anything that has current that is being connected to it. A reverse polarity will cause damage to the unit and it will need sending off back to the factory or possibly even replacing. So please just make sure that you have things right way around before connecting them. Let's start with the retracts. The retracts go in this corner here and is marked as main right, main left and nose leg. The controller also indicates the positive and negative side to the wire itself. As the electron retracts are reversible, it may be the case that you have reversed your trunnion from this way round to the other side, which is a very simple process and simply means that when the gear is retracted, it points one way as opposed to the other. Now this may be necessary depending on your model. If that's the case, then for whichever reversed retract you have, simply reverse the polarity on it. There's no danger or damage here, as the retracts do work in both directions, it just means that if you reverse one of them, it will work in the opposite direction of rotation, as you may expect. So, let's connect that up as normal, following the colours on the controller. Next up, let's connect the brakes. Now the brakes are clearly marked on the controller to go here, however there's no polarity on it. The reason being that the brakes work both ways, so it doesn't matter which way round the polarity goes. Just make sure to use the standard wire in which the both end pins are used and not the centre pin. So we'll connect that in there, like that. Next, let's start connecting the input channels. So the gear, the brake and the steering inputs. The first one is the gear input and we can see which way around it should be connected. Signal, positive, negative. So we're going to bring our gear input wire in and connect that up in that direction. The next one is the brake input. Now if you're using the brake channel we'll connect the wire in here. If you're using single channel mode no connection here is required. For more information on single channel mode, please check out our other video in which we go into great detail explaining what it is and how it can be used to your advantage. Mainly, it is to avoid the use of an extra channel on your radio or receiver. For this example, let's connect it up. So again, following the right polarity, we'll connect that one in there like that. The next one that we have left is the rudder input, which is basically our steering. If you're short on channels, you can also Y-lead this with your rudder channel, as the controller will automatically turn the servo off when the gear is retracted to prevent the steering moving whilst inside the model. Again, we'll make sure that we have it the right way around. And plug that in there like that. And finally, we have our rudder servo, which would better be termed 
as our steering servo. So we'll take our servo and connect that up into that last slot there, like so. Now that we have everything connected up, just double check the polarity of everything, as well as that of the multiplex connector, which we're going to use to power the whole unit and make that final connection as well. Like so. There we are, everything's now connected and we're ready to start setting up everything in the actual controller itself. Setting up the RB45 is very straightforward and is done entirely via this LED button. So to enter setup mode, we're going to press that button whilst we power our model on at the receiver. Wait one to two seconds after turning on and release. That LED button will now be flashing with a single flash. That indicates that we have entered the setup and we can now set the closed position for our gear. So on our radio we make sure that we have our gear switch in the retracted position and we press that button once. We can now see that the LED is flashing twice. That means that it saved the previous point and we can now set the down position of the gear switch. So we go back to our radio, gear down and press the button again. The LED now flashes three times. We can now set where we want the brakes to start braking. So for this example I've used the slider on the radio just to keep things nice and simple for me as I do have a limited number of hands. However you can use the elevator channel or any other switch or slider on your radio as you desire. So we're simply going to put the slider where we want it to start braking, so minimum brake, and press that button once again. We'll now go back to our radio and put our brakes in the full lock position. So full brakes and press that button once again. We can now see the LED flashing five times. That means we can now set up the position for the steering servo in the gear closed position. Why is that important? Well, depending on which steering system you're using, especially one of the ones where it disconnects the steering from the actual retract itself when retracted, we want the servo to be in its most centered position so that when the gear extends again, it can lock in without any kind of issue. If using servo plate or any other system where the steering servo moves with the retracts, this is a lot less important. However, it's still highly recommendable to get the most centered position possible. To do so, we simply move our steering via the radio to the position where we want it to be in the closed retract position and press that button one more time. The LED now goes solid, indicating that we've finished our setup and the unit is ready to go. We can now turn the model off and on and go fly. So let's see exactly what the result is. We have our gear. which is now retracted in the retracted position as set in the setup. Extend. So we're now ready for takeoff or ready for landing. As we're in the extended position, the brakes will also now work. So if we have those in the off position, that moves easily. However, as soon as we start applying brakes, we can see that the brakes are a lot harder to move because they're applying force proportionally in accordance to our slider. With the gear out, we also have control over our steering. Yet, as soon as we retract, even if we leave the brakes on, as soon as we retract, 
our servo goes back to its gear up position, centered, and the brakes automatically release. Now it's worth pointing out that when all three retracts are connected, as soon as the controller detects that they've all reached their extended position, it instantly activates the steering servo and the brakes. If, however, not all three are connected, there will be a delay because the controller is kind of waiting for the other two to arrive. Past a few seconds, once it detects that they are, haven't arrived, basically because they're not going to reach, because they're not connected, it will then turn on the steering and the servo anyway. However, if you're doing any tests at home and you detect a lag between the retract, retracting, and everything else coming on, that's the reason why. Also, if you're using a single channel operation, the process is exactly the same, simply without connecting that second input wire for the brakes, as everything is controlled via the gear channel. It's also worth pointing out that if due to the model that you're using, you are not using any brakes, and you just have the retracts, then steps three and four don't need to be completed. You can simply skip over them by pressing the button twice. Also, if at any point you wish to reset any of the positions or any part of the setup, simply repeat the process. This basically performs a reset on the unit and you will start again. And with those five simple steps, you can then set up everything again in absolutely no time at all. And just to add to the troubleshooting, if at the time you perform the setup, you turn the model off, turn it on again, and things are not working as you would have expected them to, double check that your radio has everything set to roughly 100%. As if the travel is not enough in any one of the inputs, then that part of the setup will be null and void and won't work correctly. Simply set the correct endpoints in the radio and start again. And there we are. That is the Electron Retrax RB45. Small, light, but still very powerful. And if your next model doesn't have gear doors or requirements for a sequencer, this is the one for you. We hope that you found this video useful. If you did, leave us a like. If you have any questions or queries, please contact us or leave them in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all in the next one for Electron Retracks.